What's up, Needle Dicks? Welcome back to the channel. Recently, I revised the match that I did on Sexy Eddie versus the Arsenal. It went from a three minute video to a 45 minute video. So I think it's time we revise another. Today, we'll be checking out Madman Pondo versus Necro Butcher in a House of Pain deathmatch from IWA Mid South No Blood, No Guts, No Glory 2002 at the Colgate Warehouse in Clarksville, Indiana. Video that I made on it when I first started my channel fucking blows. I'm just playing, it wasn't that bad, but this is gonna be way better. House of Pain death matches took place in IWA in the early 2000s, and they're basically 200 light tube matches with light tubes all over the ropes and three light tube log cabins outside the ring. And without further ado, let's get into the match. We get the match graphic, and then we see Pondo make his way out of the door with Jaden Drago. Pondo comes out in a Spongebob shirt with a bandana wrapped around his ponytail to bullet with butterfly wings by smashing pumpkins and he makes his way around the ring. Fans give it up for Pondo as he steps over a cabin. He doesn't even get in the ring, he goes straight into the crowd and picks up a fan chair. Walks up and tries to throw it in the ring. Kobe. Pondo lays down on the apron underneath the tubes and slides into the ring. See some purple tubes on the apron and Pondo climbs into the ring and stands up and grabs that chair and brings it into the corner and sets it up. Once he gets the chair set up, he grabs some giant light tubes and props them in the corner. He warns the fans sitting there about the broken glass. Soon to make his way to the ring. It will be the next Pondo one. walks into the center of the ring and bends over and picks up some more long light tubes and props them up too. If you're new to deathmatch, they're skinnier and longer light tubes and they cut you way worse than the normal T12s that they use. Plenty will be flying in this matchup. Pondo's still not done and grabs some more big ass tubes and sets them up in the corner as we hear Necro's music start. If he wanted to. All this started when man Necro's music starts picking up and we get a shot of him coming out of the door hype the fuck up and he turns around and starts picking up some light tube chairs. Necro comes out to get me through by Ozzy Osbourne, my favorite generic Japanese rock song. He starts walking towards the ring and he says something to Ian Rotten real quick. Necro is fucking psyched for this match and he raises up the light tube chair. He decides to take a stroll around the ring. He sees the log cabins and it looks like he gets even more hype. He takes one of the light tube chairs and puts it on the apron. Smart Mark walks up and gets a nice shot of the chair. He walks past the log cabins and keeps making his way around the ring. Necro points at one of the cabins and puts the other chair in the ring. As he stands there next to the cabin, a fan hands him a piece of wood with a shitload of nails in it like it's a toothbrush, and Necro holds it up like it's Simba from Lion King. He points at the last log cabin. Necro pretends to take cover behind the ring crew, and then he walks over the light tube log cabin and goes by the ring post and starts pointing at Drago. We've got the three craziest some bitches in here doing this. Drago's like fuck that and makes his way to the other side of the ring. But there's actually four cabins instead of three. Necro sits there and just stares at the light tube ring. Ring announcer gets on the mic and introduces the match and the men. A tremendous matchup. Now let's go up to the ring introductions. Necro looks at the fans and climbs in the ring. Pondo snatches a mic and tells the fans to shut the fuck up. He kind of looks like it. He starts shit talking the fans. Pondo has to say.
He is quite crazy. Pro's like, oh fuck yeah, I'll do it. And takes his shirt off and Pondo sneak attacks him. Man, man. Bell rings as Pondo clubs Necro in the back and he takes off the ICP jersey wrapped around his waist. Grabs Necro's head and scratches his face as the ref throws the jersey outside the ring. Kobe. Sorry, Necro Butcher's not the sharpest knife in the, uh, in the drawer. He grabs something in the corner and elbows Necro Butcher in the stomach and he pulls it out and it's like a whisker or an egg beater or some shit and he grinds it into Necro's head. Or something, mashed potatoes, something, I don't know. All the kitchen utensils being drops the egg beater and starts to stand Necro back up to his feet. Nelson there to carve his forehead with. Grabs Necro and pushes him into the corner, stomach first, and then takes a light tube and kicks it into his ass and balls. There's one. Walks over to the ropes and discards the broken light tube. Hundred and something left to go, according to Rico Beatty. Ondo grabs a handful of Necro's hair and pushes him up against the ropes. Goes for an Irish whip into the tubes, but Necro stops short and counters and kicks him in the face and rips his shirt off. Off comes Pondo's shirt. Starts pointing into the corner at the long light tube. Starts setting Pondo up for a power bomb and he picks him up and holds him up there for a minute and then runs into the corner and rams him into all the tubes. Jesus Christ, bro. It's not the 4th of July and that wasn't a fireworks show you just heard. Necro walks around the ring holding on to his head and then stands Pondo up to his feet. Pondo Takes Pondo and just rams him into the light tube ropes. The six pack He's like, no, nah, that's not good enough and kicks him into the log cabin. I'm sorry, Madman Pondo. You see Pondo laying in the broken glass and he pushes the cabin out of the way as the fans chant Charlie. One of the log cabins and up goes a Charlie. Chant Pondo makes it back crowd. up to his feet and we see Necro exit in the ring. Somewhere in heaven, Charlie's going to move the fuck out of my Steps way. over the log cabin and gives Pondo a big headbutt. He's not satisfied, so he grabs a broken light tube. Pushes Pondo onto his knees and then slides the light tube down his singlet and gives him a big kick. See is the necro butcher on his feet. I can't see hardly a damn thing with all these light tubes in the way. Still not satisfied and grabs another tube. Finds it up on his forehead and headbutts the shit out of it. Let's slow mo that shit. Pondo walks over and takes cover in a fan's chair. Camera pans over to Jaden clubbing Necro in the back. Has absolutely no effect on Necro as if he was fighting someone in a dream or some shit. Necro grabs him by the neck. Jaden pleads the Necro to let him go. And while Necro's distracted, Pondo rocks him with a chair. Necro starts stumbling into Smart Mark and then bends over on a chair with Jaden pounding on his back. In stunned silence, not even knowing how to react to the mayhem that is going on in front of them. Jaden keeps clubbing Necro in the back and Necro's like, bro, fuck this and grabs Jaden by the dick and throws him into the fucking fan's chair. The ladder of success over here on the commentator booth. Here, two tough Tony's car alarm going off as Necro tries to regroup in the crowd. Tries going after Jaden, but Jaden books it. See the ref tap on Necro's shoulder and point towards the ring telling him to climb back in. Pondo, his newest flunky Necro's like, all right, let's fucking go and gets amped up and starts walking around the ring. Something to keep them up there in the corner. Necro starts chasing Jaden again and jumps over a log cabin, but the ref catches him and tells him to go in the ring. His eyesight isn't the Necro's best. like, nah, I'm going to kill this little motherfucker and chases him again. He's giving chase to Jaden Drago. Off camera, Necro's like, all right, fuck it. I'll get back in the ring. And he climbs on the apron and gets destroyed. Oh! Dude, Pondo hit him so fucking hard. Now that he took care of Necro, he goes back into the corner and starts duct taping some light tubes to the top turnbuckle. A couple of years ago, and it doesn't feel. You're a fan chanting for Necro as Jaden holds on to the tube. Associated with over 200 light bulb tubes. We get a zoom in on Necro picking glass out of his back. Head, arms. Ondo walks up and starts standing him up to his feet. Just bastards want to hit each other. Takes him and shoves him into the corner full of light tubes. Pondo's got some gashes on his arms. Necro lays back in the corner, and Pondo grabs him by the arm and goes for an Irish whip. Sure, I can't tell. Necro counters and blocks it, and Pondo looks at him, and goes for a clothesline, and Necro picks him up and crotches him on the top rope. Overhead swing. 
He just crotched Hondo on the light bulb too. Hondo climbs off the top rope and starts crawling on all fours. Smart Mark Benning and all these fans can sit that close to the action. I'm kind of scared all the way back here, 15 feet away. 2001 was a tremendous... Necro year. walks up to Pondo and bends over and tries to pick him up and gets a light tube to the face. The Sandman tours of Japan. Pondo stands back up and walks into the corner and grabs a chair. New American Danger Man. He walks over to the opposite side of the ring and sets it back up. Going pretty well for him so far. He turns around in the ring and starts asking for another chair. Only combatant standing right now. One of the fans starts to give Pondo a chair and he walks up and chokes Necro and grabs it. 25 to 50 of them. He takes it and turns around and walks back into the corner and sets it up so it's facing the other chair. He starts ripping light tubes off the ropes and we get a shot of Necro's bleeding back. Tubes on the ropes at the start. Pondo starts grabbing as many light tubes as he can and sets them up bridge across the two chairs. He's Sets up so many tubes, and we hear that the match has been five minutes so far. Bridge across two chairs. Turns around and grabs Necro by the hair, and it's only been five minutes, and Necro's five back is bleeding in. like crazy. Necro Pondo grabs onto him and shoves him into the corner. There's just kind of like a cloud of smoke. It looks like everybody punches him in the stomach and then starts grabbing light tubes and just chucks him. from the light bulb tubes, not the healthiest thing in the world. He's moving those light tubes out of the way because he's trying to get Necro up on the top row. Tries to climb up there with him, but there's so many fucking light tubes, so he starts to push him out of the way. Necro grabs a broken light tube and hits Pondo in the head with it, but he no-sells it. Pondo starts setting him up for a DDT through all the tubes. DDT off the top. Ah, damn. Let's see that again. Pondo. DDT off the top. Get a shot of both men laying in all the broken light tubes, and Pondo starts to sit up on his knees. Men fin crashing through the light bulb tube. Fixes his elbow pad and then grabs a chair and chucks it and stands back up to his feet. Pondo starts to grab him by the head, but then he says, nah, fuck it, and walks over and grabs more light tubes. This is definitely not good for the Takes a couple light tubes off the ropes and just drops them on the mat, and we get a zoom in on Necro laying in the broken glass. Very sadistic. Takes a few more tubes and tosses them down and then grabs a chair and chucks it across the ring. He's already piling up more light bulbs. Auto grabs onto our boy DK and stands him up to his feet. Just flunky Jaden Drago out of ringside. Helping him Takes him by the head and grabs him and picks him up like he's going to give him a scoop slam and puts him in the tree of woe. Hondo has him upside down and he takes his foot and tweaks it into the turnbuckle so he can't get down. Hondo walks over to the ropes and starts grabbing tubes. Pondo, it's hard to he grabs a bundle of light tubes and walks up to Necro and moves his arm out of the way and then puts the light tubes in front of his fucking face. Pondo starts moving his arms so the light tubes don't fall down and Jaden Drago comes up and grabs onto them and holds them in place. Pondo turns around and tries getting the crowd hyped up and then he turns around and runs and kicks the tubes into his fucking face. Dude, you've got to be fucking kidding me. Bro, he has so much glass in his fucking face. Necro falls down from the tree of woe as Pondo stands up to his feet. Once he stands up, he walks over to the opposite side of the ring. Pondo bends over and picks up a steel chair and walks into the corner and sets it up again. He may not be able to get up after. Picks a piece of glass out of his hand and then he walks over and grabs Necro. Drago on the outside looks you like can see Necro's covered in blood and Pondo tries grabbing onto him, but he can't get him up. He's covered the Shawn Michaels Wrestling Academy. Oh. Necro's basically just crawling in the ring and Pondo grabs onto him and drags him over to the corner. None of it was Necro is fucking lifeless and Pondo keeps trying to stand him up. How to change the lights in the building. Gets him back on his feet, but Necro can't even stand and falls over into the glass. Pondo. My tubes are just breaking, and we get a shot of Necro laying there picking glass out of his arm. Pondo turns around and starts looking for a chair again. That man Pondo, though, has a doctorate in light bulb tubes. Pondo's getting heated, and he's like, dude, give me a fucking chair. He says something to the fans, but we can't hear him, and he walks up and grabs another chair. Walks over to Necro and sets up the chair on top of his fucking face and then walks over and grabs some light tubes. This matchup, but Necro Butcher, even though he's down, he's, I'm sure he's not out. We've seen Necro Butcher take all kinds of punishment. Ondo grabs as many tubes as he can hold and he turns around and starts to adjust the chair and then lays the light tubes down on top of Necro. In your mouth. Okay, he has chairs across the leg. We see one sneaky light tube say, fuck this, I'm out, and wiggles its way out of the ring. Covering the face of the Necro Butcher. And now he no worries though, as Pondo has a shitload of light tubes on top of him. This could be a senton. 
could be a splash. Drago. Hondo asking for Drago's help, and he goes into the corner and starts standing up on the rope. And it looks like we're going to find out. Stands up on the middle rope and starts telling the fans to give it up and jumps off and does a flip on a Necro. Tendon through the light tube bridge. You already know we got to see that again. Tendon through the light tube bridge. Bondo rolls over and it looks like he's going for the pin on Necro, but the ref doesn't count. That has to do something. To Madman Pondo. Says fuck it and stands up to his feet and climbs through the ropes to the outside. Pondo's probably got his back covered in glass. He exits the ring and starts making his way over to the spider's nest. Now he's coming over here. Probably. The camera pans over to Necro sitting in the ring with the ref checking on him. And then we get a shot of him. And bro, he's fucking covered in blood. Pondo. His arm is fucking leaking and he holds it in place as he tries to stand back up. And he's got it. Pondo takes a garbage can and chucks it in the ring and then grabs a chair and throws that in the ring too. We get a shot of Necro's back and it's tore the fuck up. Behind him, we see Pondo making his way back in the ring through the light tube. Pondo walks over and grabs another chair and sets it up in the ring and then grabs the second chair and sets that one up too. Goes into the corner and grabs a third chair and bridges that one across the two that he set up. We see Jaden reach in the ring to try to help, but he's like, nah, fuck it, and backs up. Pondo stands up and grabs a light tube off the road. He holds it up to blast Necro with it, but Necro starts fighting him off. Ten minutes has gone by as Necro gets Pondo off of him and Pondo goes into the corner. Necro's finally back on his feet and he goes into the corner and grabs one of the light tube chairs. Stands up in the middle of the ring and walks up to Pondo and rocks him in the back with it. Oh, fuck yeah. And we hear the crowd giving it up. Necro stands back up to his feet again and grabs onto the garbage can and puts it on top of the bridge chair. Takes a few steps and starts grabbing light tubes off the ropes and puts them into the garbage can. Light bulb tubes being placed into the garbage can that he gets a bunch of light tubes set up in the garbage can and then he walks around and starts to grab pondo on some chairs jane i don't Necro picks him up and sits him on the top rope again he has in mind here jaden drago can give all the moral support pondo sits there on the top rope and a bloody necro butcher turns to him and shit cans him into the light tube garbage can light tubes Jesus. classic pondo let's get another angle of that Jesus. Crowd breaks out into a huge holy shit chant as Pondo crawls out of the garbage can. Man, man, Pondo. You can see his back is covered in blood. Head first. You know this shit is old school when Pondo has a fucking ponytail. He starts grabbing onto some of the chairs and moves them out of the way. Unbelievable to a man. For as much as I like talking, I'm speechless. See Pondo trying to regroup as Necro walks over and picks up one of the chairs and sets it up on the mat. to these two men with just mere words. Both men are just bloody and fucking destroyed and Necro grabs onto Pondo. He takes him and throws him into the light tube ropes. Somehow none of the tubes ended up breaking and Necro starts pushing him with his foot again. Pondo counters with a big low blow. Pondo stands back up and walks over to the ropes and grabs his classic stop sign. Flexibility with the walks up and cracks Necro right in the fucking face. Necro stands there selling and falls onto his knees and we see Pondo pick up the garbage can and dump it on the mat. He starts kicking some glass out of the ring and then he walks up and puts the garbage can on Necro's head. He looks like someone is just tanking a can of Grabs Necro and lays him down in the broken glass. Pondo rolls Necro over on the broken light tubes until he's on his back. Now he's rolling him around in that garbage can. Pondo walks across the ring over Necro and turns around in the corner. He hoists himself up so he's sitting on the top rope and tries to adjust his footing. Camera zooms out and we see Necro in the ring and Pondo tries to stand on the top rope and slips but falls onto his feet. Pondo's like, fuck it guys, I'm good. And turns around and starts ripping some light tubes off the rope so he has enough room to climb up. Jumps off the top rope and fucking crushes Necro's head with all of his body weight. But doesn't matter when you do that. Bro, come on. But doesn't matter when you do that. Basically flatten that fucking thing. Pondo immediately stands back up to his feet and turns around. For whom? Walks over to the side of the ring and climbs through the ropes to the outside. Once he gets on the floor, he bends over and picks up that giant fucking light tube log cabin and starts to put it in the ring over the top rope. 
of glass. We see Jaden walking up, trying to make sure it doesn't break. Elite. Once he gets it in there, he starts walking back over to the spider's nest. Hondo walks over and grabs a classic yellow ladder and starts walking towards the ring with it. So bloody. When he gets to the ring, he throws the ladder over the top rope. Kobe, instead of climbing in the ring, he turns around and walks back up to the spider's nest again. A bloody mess. He's coming back for more. He walks around the side of the spider's nest and finds a silver ladder, and he picks that up and starts walking towards the ring. <laughs> Hondo telling me... About his Jaden says something to Pondo, but Pondo ignores him and walks around the side of the ring and then throws the ladder in. Well, he tried at least, but that definitely wasn't Kobe. That ladder got so close to breaking that log cabin, and Pondo walks up and chucks it in the ring. That's probably why I never get laid. Gets up on the apron and climbs through the ropes. If that's true. Walks over to the silver ladder and picks it up and starts setting it up in the ring. A lot of glory. Next, he picks up the yellow ladder and sets that one up right next to it. He gets both ladders set up in the ring, and then he walks over to the side and grabs that giant light tube log cabin. He stands the thing up on its fucking side and puts it in between the two ladders. Pondo grabs onto the yellow ladder and spins it around. Caden starts holding the log cabin in place, and Pondo starts grabbing some tubes and just puts them on top of it. He takes the light tubes and starts bridging them across the steps of the ladder. Single light bulb tubes bridged across... Whatever Pondo happens. starts saying something to Jaden, and Jaden lets go of the log cabin, but the thing still stands up. Pondo doing construction like he's he goes into the corner and starts grabbing more tubes. He takes those light tubes and bridges them across the steps of the ladders too, and we see the light tubes just falling down in different directions. Pondo walks up and puts more tubes in. He'd break the son of a Still doesn't have enough tubes, so he takes some off the ropes, and a fan walks up and hands him a bundle, and the camera pans over to Necro, who's laying there in a shitload of blood with that garbage can. Yes, last night, Man Man Pondo made a pledge. Get a shot of Necro picking more glass out of his arm. Drive down to Clarksville and Mark Mark zooms in on all the fucking blood in that garbage can. It's so sick. Right now, he's trying to... This looks like a scene out of Passion of the Christ Deathmatch Edition. As we see Necro's battered fucking body, Pondo is just putting more light tubes on top of that giant fucking pile, and he puts another log cabin on top. We've still got an entire box of See Jaden trying to adjust some of the light tubes, and if that's not enough, Pondo grabs another full box of tubes. And I have a Pondo starts pulling the tubes out of the box and Jaden holds on to it and he pulls out the entire fucking thing. He ends up dropping all of the light tubes, but he picks some of them up and puts it on top. Together. They're still not done. Jaden puts a few more on top of that. Falling down, falling Finally, Pondo grabs Necro by the head once again. Necro is so fucking bloody and Pondo tells Jaden to move out of the way. You see Necro bent over it's on his crazy. knees trying to stand back up as Pondo tries to drag him into the corner. Necro Butcher's had a lot of time to recover, but I think he's going to need more. He can't even stand. John Howard staying back. Necro's still struggling to stand up to his feet as Pondo tries to drag him, and we get a shot of all the light tubes they set up, and this is fucking ridiculous. Pondo starts ripping some light tubes out of the corner to make some room. You don't... The crowd is so fucking silent, so Pondo starts telling them to give it the fuck up. Crowd cheers both men on, and we see Necro turning around facing the two. Pondo grabs onto Necro and sits him on the top rope. Like, tubes are just falling all over the place with the referee trying to hold them up. Pondo lifts Necro's leg up and tries to get it over the ropes, but there's so many light tubes in the way, so he just starts grabbing them and chucking them out of the way. Necro lays there lifeless on the top rope, so Pondo shoves his head and tries to climb up there with him. Pondo climbs up and starts standing on the second rope and grabs Necro and tries setting him up for a fucking superplex through the two. Necro tries getting his footing on the ropes and we see one of the deadliest suplexes in wrestling history. Bro, check this shit out. Shit was so dangerous, there were so many light tubes in random directions. Oh, 
Both men lay there and all the spooky dust and broken glass as the fans go nuts. This was one of the most dangerous spots that ever took place in deathmatch wrestling history because of all the light tubes in different directions. And Pondo goes for the pin and gets the three count. We hear the bell ring and we get a zoom in on Necro's arm. Bro, there's a giant fucking hole in his arm and the cameraman's like, holy shit, and tries to get a better shot. Pondo sees his arm and immediately tells them to call for an ambulance. Slowed it down and zoomed in, and bro, look at that fucking wound. It almost looks like a gunshot or some shit. Looks like one of those crooked light tubes just scooped a chunk right out of his fucking arm. See Ian Rotten climb in the ring and wrap a shirt around Necro's arm. Nobody really mentions it, but Ian Rotten takes this injury very serious. See the IWA Mid-South ring crew climb in the ring and start to move all the glass and ladders out of the way. They start bringing the ladders outside the ring and there's so many fucking light tubes on the mat. You see the ring crew start pulling light tubes off the ropes as Pondo just paces back and forth in the ring. Here's some fans on the phone with 911, and bro, look how fucking bad he's bleeding. Echo tries standing up, but he's in so much fucking pain, he sits back down. Echo's body is so fucked up, he looks like a zombie once again. This isn't the first time we've seen his body completely destroyed on this channel. Ring crew climbs in the ring and wraps that shirt around Necro's arm again, and we see Jim Fannin and a few people walk up and give them some water jumps. Pondo grabs a water jug and starts dumping it on Necro's back as Ian tells the fans to go home. Pondo grabs a water jug and takes a second and gives it to Ian Rotten. Bro, look how fucked up Necro's body is and the cameraman zooms in on his wrist and he's leaking like crazy. see someone put a cooler in the ring as Necro just sits there on his knees in pain. As everyone starts leaving the building, we see some medics climb into the ring with their bags. That would be a good start, and bro, Necro is such a fucking king, he's not even panicking at all. Tim Fannin's on the mic telling the fans they have to check the message boards if they want an update on Necro as he tries to stand up in the ring starts making his way over to the side of the ring as we see the ring crew lifting up the rope so he can climb out. Necro crouches again and climbs outside the ring. He walks down the steps onto the floor and when he gets down he starts walking towards the entranceway into the back. If you are not a wrestler, please leave. If you're not waiting on a wrestler, please leave. At least get out of the building. Go, go wait in a car. Bro, if I was there, I would be like, dude, I am not leaving Necro behind. Necro sits there on his knees on the outside of the ring, getting checked on by a dude in a beret and gloves, and that's a wrap on this match, guys. Bray dude gets fucking pissed. Unfortunately, the men didn't cut any promos after the match because they had to rush to the hospital. I did my own shoot interview with Madman Pondo that's available at patreon.com slash blako561. I asked Pondo about this match and we spoke about it for a little bit. Check it out and enjoy. Another big historic moment that I've covered on my YouTube channel that I was dying to ask you about was your House of Pain death match with Necro Butcher back in IWA in 2002. Um. No. 
No, I went to the ho- – I mean, yes, it was terrible. I don't yeah. see I, – I don't know on your video if you can hear me or not, but the minute I saw his arm, I stopped the match and started yelling for somebody to get an ambulance. I don't know if that's on your video or not. I'm pretty sure I did. No. Fucking ambulance! And uh, so I knew, okay, there's there's some wrong shit going on here. Mm-hmm. And um, I went to the hospital, uh, sat there with Necro. Uh, not, not with Necro. I was in the waiting room. Necro was gone. And then uh, we had an apartment together at that time. Really? And, uh, really? Yeah. Uh, and I'm, I'm sitting around the house, and I'm, I'm all sad and... I'm all fucked up, and Necro finally comes over to me, and he goes, Pondo, what move did we do for that to, to happen to my arm? I said, a suplex off the off the second rope. He goes, where was your arm? And I said, it was behind your neck. And he goes, do you realize if my arm wasn't behind your neck, that piece would- of glass would have went up through your neck, and you wouldn't be here today. Bro. Stop fucking sitting around beating yourself up, you know. And I was like, oh, you know what? Yeah, you, you're right, you know. So, uh, so yeah, Necro is very uh, intelligent when it comes to shit like that. I can't even imagine what the backlash would have been like if that did happen and one of you guys were to pass or something from a death match. Like, I'm sure we wouldn't even have the scene that we have today, and that probably would have shut a bunch of shit down, you know? Yeah. Link to the full interview in the description. Necro Butcher did a four hour long interview with RF Video. He talked about a shitload of subjects, but in this clip, he talks about wrestling for IWA Mid South and he speaks about this match and his injuries and he talks about jacking off and more. Check it out. And Ian was running pretty regularly. Right, well, there was a gar- there's guaranteed two, show- two shows a week. So he's running like Wednesdays at one Right. Right. You know, there, there's all kind of young talent. Like, uh, I don't think, yeah, these are just young guys at the time. How, how many guys have come through IW Mid-South that at one point or another were on some sort of developmental deal? Yeah. Uh, 50, 50, 60? Yeah. Well, that's a legitimate number. Yeah. I mean, that was uh, because Ian's looking for young, hungry guys. <laughs> you know, and that's who succeeds, is young, hungry guys. So I, I just saw a mixture of well-established veterans as well as a multitude of really young talented guys and uh this is this is this is the place where i want to be and this is where the main events are so that's what i want to do Did you and, feel like you fit in originally uh, i don't know before you were kind of accepted amongst the the ranks oh uh, i mean how, a few how years a few years guys? after a few years after a few years originally no or, originally originally not originally no but now i can you know i would never like some of the antics I pulled at CCW, I would never, I would never dream to show up <laughs> in that, that sort of condition. <laughs> some of those shows back then, <laughs> you know. You. Um, one of the uh, early um, kind of um, major events in your wrestling career was 2002. You did a, uh, a brutal match with Madman Pondo um, at IWA Mid South, where you lost a big chunk of your arm. Yeah. Um, what do you remember about that? I remember not wanting to do it. For those who had there was basically a, hundreds of light Yeah, just for the sake of light, of yeah. Well, they, they, they made this ladder. He made like a, a And then they, a they, they rushed. They rushed. Pondo did it. I, I, I'm hanging out on the top rope watching. I'm going to get hurt. This is right. going to be horrible. You know, they made this light tube ladder contraption. And some of the bridge, two and some, but some of the some of the light tubes had fallen. Uh, some were diagonal. Some were upside down. And uh, it was it was a, they had put me to sleep to fix my arm and all that kind of stuff. It was pretty bad. But uh, think about it, though, it was my left arm which the, he suplexed me off of the top rope through all these fucking light tubes. So if it had not been my fucking arm, it'd have been his fucking head. So I don't mind getting my arm cut up. Do I want to see people get hurt? Yes. Do I do I see people get fucked up? No. <laughs> you know, so that would have fucked them up. Well, so I, uh, I'd much rather get my arm a little fucked up than somebody's head. You just know. Just talking about it, I can't really do it justice, but hopefully, um, Rob can uh, splice in it. <laughs> that's what that that's what they do. That's what these camera guys do. The that's what these camera guys do. Because um, that was that was really vicious. Um, you know, literally there was a chunk of your arm hanging out, a lot of blood and. 
I mean, that was pretty much the end of the match right on the spot. And oh, people, yeah. People were immediately calling yeah. for the ambulance, immediately clearing the building out. That's yeah, a bit um, of a bummer, yeah. <laughs> yeah. I mean, you were, even you, like, even you on the tape, like, you could hear you saying, like, fuck. This is well, bad, pretty much. Because I know what this entails. Yeah. This well, is, you're, this not, this you're not one that complains much, but <laughs> I mean, at that point... Well, this entails. You realize the emergency. Uh, well, uh, not so much that, but I'm gonna have to go to the hospital. Mm -hmm. I'm gonna be there, God knows how long. Yeah. You know, uh, I'm gonna miss who knows how many matches, which doesn't fucking matter. But in my head, oh God, what's, what's that's gonna happen? I, how are they gonna fix my arm? How, much, how many matches am I gonna well, miss? Most people would be worried about. Are they still gonna be able to use their arm? But no, you were thinking, no. I can figure out a way. How many matches? I mean, I stopped jacking off with this arm years ago. <laughs> I used to be able to do both. But now, I don't know, maybe shortly before high school, I, well, right before high school, when I got really into jacking off, uh -huh. I kind of specialized on the right hand. I used to be able to do either one equally as proficiently, but uh, uh, it's been years since I jacked off with this arm. Years, probably well, 30. Ma maybe 25 years I jacked off my left arm. Mm -hmm. So that's, that's the uh, and, and this arm, if I injured my right arm, oh my God, you would have saw sheer fucking panic <laughs> in that fucking tape with my arm. Oh my God, what the hell, you know. Uh, well, you fucking, uh, it's, it's, uh, there are so many great things about jacking off. So many great things. Uh, you don't have to go extra long to impress yourself. That, that's, that's a great thing, you know. Great right, you know, uh, Yeah, uh, I, I'm not trying to impress nobody here. I'm just trying to get this over with. All said and done, how many stitches were there? Mm. you remember? I think it was 117 or something like that. And how much time did you miss? You were back uh, two or three weeks later? I could have wrestled in, in 10 days. Ian made me wait two weeks, maybe three weeks. They wanted to wait for the, everything to get back together out of there. You know. right back in there. Yeah, man, I, I didn't come. I didn't move from uh, Texas to Louisville. I, I didn't watch my first wife and uh, four kids drive away, or three kids. I didn't watch my first wife and three kids drive away in a car because I want to stay in Texas and wrestle. And I didn't fucking move from Texas to Louisville to fucking be hurt and be in a hospital. I moved up here to wrestle, so that's what I wanted to do. 117 fucking stitches to fix his arm. Holy shit. Necro Butcher took off about a month and returned at the IWA Mid-South King of the Death Match 2002. Check out his entrance when he sees the IWA Mid-South fans again. They fucking love him. A little bit of the missing link. A whole lot of the Necro Butcher. Wow. Fans on their feet for the Necro Butcher. If I could stand up without my head feeling like it was in an airplane, I'd be on my feet for the Necro Butcher, too. Has become a hardcore punk favorite. And it's not just because of his entrance music. Although that is why I like him. <laughs> you know, it's funny, you compare him to Boozer Brody. I wonder how many of these schmuck fans actually know who Bruiser Brody is. <laughs> I'd like to profess my love for Bruiser Brody right now. Somebody I actually looked up to when I was a small child. He went up against Mark Wolf in the opening round and won with a leg drop off the second rope. The ropes. Drops that leg. It wasn't on fire, but could this be enough? And that's yes, all she is. wrote. In the quarterfinals, he went up against Almost Mitch Page in a Fans Bring the Weapons match. With the Whitey oh! Despite Carmine's interference, Necro locked in the Asiatic Spike and picked up the win. Spike! Spike! Asiatic Spike! Mitch is down! He's got it! He's down! He's got it on him! He's got a body scissors! Will Mitch Page be eliminated from this tournament? One arm! One arm's down! One! Stay in it, Mitch! He goes two! No, go out, Mitch! Stay in it! One more and he's out! This never works. Miss Patty, done for! The semifinals, he went up against Too Tough Tony in a log cabin of glass death match where he locked in the Asiatic spike again. A second time! And you gotta, you gotta think that this is it. Not only because I picked Necro Butcher to win the entire tournament, but because this is the second time he's applying a, such a painful hold. That's it! Necro Butcher! Nate! Necro Butcher versus Spider Nate Webb in the finals. In the finals, Necro Butcher went up against Nate Webb in one of the craziest deathmatch stipulations I've ever seen. It drops him chest first on that bombed wire! Necro picked up the win with a huge powerbomb to win the tournament. It's a big powerbomb. That was three! Necro Butcher! With a power bomb!
becomes King of the Death Matches 2002. I'll tell you what, CM Punk. That man was well deserved. Necro Butcher totally deserves the 2002 King of the Death Match. Well, he does. And Dave Prezak. You can take everything away from Nate Rob. Dave Prezak, when we were coming. Today, Necro and Pondo are still wrestling and just did a full tour over in Japan. Took a shitload of awesome pictures over there. If you want to see a full video of the pics, let me know. If you want to see footage of them wrestling over there, you can head to patreon.com slash blako561. Check out these pictures of Pondo that were taken 20 years apart in Japan. Let's fucking go. That shit is so awesome. I don't even have to hope. I know they had a great time over there. Necro even got a whiskey lemon sour prepared by Raiji Yamakawa himself. Literally would have killed to be able to go over there with them. Don't worry though, because one day I am bringing the Blake Ocam to Japan. Thanks for watching the video guys, I hope you enjoyed that House of Pain deathmatch. This match was huge in the tape trading days. This is literally one of the craziest deathmatches ever, especially for its time, and I had such a shitty video on it, I was like, bro, I'm fixing this up. The match was just spot after spot after spot, I fucking loved it. This match really elevated Necro Butcher's status and got his name out there across America. The match was so ahead of its time, it was over 20 years ago. Let me know how you guys are enjoying these revised videos, and let me know what you'd like to see in the future. We just hit 17,000 subscribers. Let's fucking go. Thank you guys so fucking much. I never expected the channel to get this big. But I'm embracing the love that I'm getting from you guys and I'm showing love back. Let's see how fast we can run this motherfucker up to 18k. But enough of all that mushy bullshit. Guys, what the fuck is this? 65% of you guys watching my videos aren't even fucking subscribed. Literally takes milliseconds to hit the subscribe button. Move your fat fucking thumb. We were even killing it at one point, but you guys shit the bed. If you're a true fan, please subscribe to the second channel, and you could also watch insane deathmatch clips on Instagram at blako 561 underscore. If you'd like to hit me up on Twitch, Twitter, or TikTok, look up blako 561 If you'd like to see Discord exclusive matches, and talk about death matches and crazy shit 24 7 head to the discord there's a link to that my email and all my social media in the description and if you'd like to show me some support please head to patreon.com slash blako561 youtube completely demonetized my account so i make zero dollars on any of the content i make the patreon doesn't come up on the app so you have to type it into your browser like i'm showing on the screen you can watch patreon exclusive matches and videos the live events i'm always filming the videos youtube's too pussy to let me keep up music videos videos, giveaways, shoot interviews, and more. Last weekend, me and my father flew to California for XPW's California 2. And not just one wing could contain 16 of the most ultra-violent combatants that are all gonna go to war tonight for the king of the Deathmatch Trial! It was a four round deathmatch tournament and it was so fucking crazy. I saw a classic two out of three log cabins of light tubes deathmatch. Oh, no! Check it out in 4K on the Patreon. I saw great deathmatch wrestling the entire night and we saw some sick fucking injuries. Sada literally burned his fucking face off. finally got an update on Masada. He ended up with second degree burns from the incident. Here's some pictures of him healing up in the hospital from TMZ. I can't even imagine how much pain he was in. His whole fucking face was on fire. Not only that, but he didn't even take a break and wrestled the rest of the fucking match. If you guys would like to read about it on TMZ, I'll put a link in the description. Look at the condition his face is in. So far, I don't think Masada has a GoFundMe, but if he makes one, I'll make a post about it for you guys. You can watch the full show at patreon.com slash blako561. Also, if you'd like to see the official version, head to streamxpw.com. Saw so much crazy shit, it felt like the show was never ending. Look at this awesome tribute they did for Supreme, like baptized in blood to. Drake wrestled four different matches in the tournament, and he ended up breaking his back and fracturing three vertebrae in his back. He also announced to the world that his wife is pregnant with twin boys. None of us had any idea that Drake was hurt, and he didn't even know because we were all celebrating so fucking hard.
filmed the full show and got some insane fucking footage. And I filmed after the official live stream ended and I got Drake fucking rapping. Drake drops a GCW diss in his rap and then gets carried out like the king he is. What a fucking night, bro. It was so fucking insane. You gotta check out the footage. The link in the description if you want to donate to Drake. Shout out to every single one of you guys that came up to me at the show and said you liked the channel. All the love and support I'm receiving from you guys is just solidifying why I do this. And as always, that leaves me at my special thank you and major shout out to my Patreon family. That's Wolfie Kohaku, Garrett McNulty, Matt Watts, Logan Flanagan, Thomas Sanchez, CEO Vision, It's Stuck Sandwich Films, Crashy, Benjamin Ailing, CEO Dylan Petricelli, Yogi Dick, Jeremy McNarley, Martin Guerrero, Jake Steele, Calculating Infinity, Baker, David R, Chris Graham, AJR, Silence Enigma, Hizzle Bizzle, Hollow Point, my new best friend Christian, Stuart McFerrin, Alex Byrne Tattoos, Tracy Warrobe, Trav, Brian Wargotch, Josh Taylor, MP Mandu, Christopher Perellis, For the Boys, Dylan Mullins, Crackio, John Botterio, Chase Wolf, Brian Colt, Will Standing a Name and Shane Morgan, Mr. Tobias, Nick Normal, UILNR, Patty Von Clambit, Foros Foros, Bong Studley, Isaac Birdsong, Grave Memories, Joe Plaxkowski, Guavion, CJ Dickmeyer, Marcus Martin, Egotist, Wayne Conway, Coma Kid, Garrett Ramey, Van Murphy, Joshua Rysig, Twisted Insane, Dan Hannix, I Catchel, these nuts. Nuts, the Horror Master, Andy A, Michael Perry, Dime Sack, Rick Styles, Insane Messiah, LB Forever, Matthew McAllister, Alexander Bat, Legend 22, Lenny, my boy. For my second page hitters, we got Kelly Miller, Daniel Smith, Eric Buduin, PD Pork Pam Puro, Trevor Mills, Thick Pickles, Josh Anderson, Jordan Johnson, Just Chris, Buki Noise, Mick Fipp, Ryan Lewis Edwards, Tyler Drunk Adam, Gage Gwynn, Brother Blake Solben, Spubini, Quandale Dinkle, Rodolfo Rivas, Ryan Bodie, Jeff Bella Fule, Teal Valdi, Toxic Key Glover, Ephraim Neves, Jeff Diaz, Andrew Francis, Snovex, Corsell Shreds, Caustic Grip, James Rowney, Frank Baker, Ryan Dunn, Patrick, Andrew Lewis, Arrowboy 2, Daniel J, Aaron Phipps, Noah Gucci. Nader Gagnon, Daniel Rodriguez, Chris Amon, Skyline, John Michael Montgomery, Jared Freeman, Brad Heck, Patrick Shepard, Liquid Mike, Cloud, Ben West, Tyler Bennett, Candy Bar, Creep Show, Mason Reed, Reaper, James Koenigstein, Chris Not Saying, Seth McHugh, Luke Weaverling, Greg Folk, Tony Van Buskirk, Logan, Austin is a butthole, Ryan Hunter Weaver, Dale Sawyer, Tunes the Bunny, William Hall, Bearing Salad, Undead Prodigy 23, Anthony Kappa, Tim Gile, Dog Soup, Andy Ace, Crow, John Bender, James Rusby, Connor Lawn. For my third page fucking hitters, we got BSO, DPK, Chris Langu, Premade K, Die Young Doug, Chiefy Food, Zach for Life, Dylan Peterson, Titus Thompson, Casey Davis, Kevin Roxham, Chris J. Jesse, Chris Mekic, Bobby Howard, Grindhouse, Pat, Philip Johnson, Gavin Turner, JT, formerly known as Cloudy, Warchief, Dragonbone, Demon of Strong Style. About a hack of a fucking lung saying all these names. And we got Killer Clown from Outer Space, Al Malay, Party Marty 520, Tate Brown, Joe Hurley, Sousa 617, Rob Brown, Lenny Lamangino, Zaffa, Josh Street, and last but not least, Illy Zippy. I love you guys almost as much as Necro loves jacking off, and I'll see you in the next video. Later.